How's it going, you guys? AZ Plow 21 back again with another WMMA5 video as a part of this UFC save. Last time I brought you guys Garbrandt versus McDonald, and I am back again here as we get ready for yet another UFC fight night. This time it is Justin Gaethje taking on Demir Ismagulov. All right. In the lightweight division, that is our main event. Take a look at the rest of the card here along with the prelims. Of course, this is all working up to our next UFC pay-per-view, UFC 272, Wu versus Berto. Three title fights, all in the women's divisions as a part of a big, big pay-per-view going on. That is going to be in the next episode. But this is all about Gaethje versus Ismagulov. Let's take a look at our emails and see what we've got going. Uh, we've got some extended deals. Uh, Christina Stanchu has completed her suspension. So let's go take a look at her. See if she's uh, she's in the strawweight division. All right, so no need to really do anything there. Uh, let's see. This guy needs to have his contract renewed. Five and zero as a lightweight, and he is the lightweight champion. Hmm. So this guy from ROC, five and zero, lightweight champion. His last fight was three months ago. He's been the champion. I think this is going to sound weird, but 5-0, and oh, but I think I'm going to bring him up. Already low-level national. He's a decent... He is a decent prospect. 5-0, and oh, the champion. I'm going to bring him up. So, Mawalade constant movement buys. He is going to be brought up. He's going to be in the UFC now. So... Congratulations to him making the move. He is now going to be in the UFC 5-0 and and a five-fight uh, contract as well. Let's take a look at Caden Shutt, the strawweight, 6-1. Strawweight, though. Can he fight in the flyweight division? It says he can fight up to the bantamweight division, um, but I think he still needs a little bit more seasoning. And he hasn't been champion or anything of that nature, so we'll go ahead and keep him in ROC. Four fights for you. All right, so now Caden needs to be sent down. All right, there's that. All right, Elnar Ibragimov. Koreshkov extends. Gadella, Belbita, Arizmendi, Anzai, Agamberdiev. This is that guy from, uh, was it M1? from 1FC that I really liked. He's the number 13 ranked light heavyweight in the world, apparently. And we can always use some highly ranked fighters in the uh, heavier weight classes, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. So I'm really excited about that, so it's going to be nice to see who we can put him up against exactly. All right, Majima extends, Means extends. Caitlin Squires is back. A lot of these ROC and Invicta guys are signed back up. Oh, Nogueira. I need to get her. So let, let, let me make sure that I can get her. We're the only offer she's considering. That's good. That is good. All right. Amir Klatz needs to be renewed. Welterweight at 1-3. and three. All right. So not the best start for your career. I'm going to go ahead and cut you from R Go ahead and cut you from ROC. Hopefully you have some uh, success elsewhere. Elizabeth Phillips is back. Extending deal, extending deal. Signs, signs, signs. A lot of this is just saying that people have signed and whatnot. All right, and that is going to do it. So let's go ahead and send all of those folks down that need to be sent down. And then we can get right into the fight night. All right, so Demas has a fight scheduled, so we still can't send him down. Dean Hawkins has been signed. Let's go ahead and send him down to ROC. All right, Andrew Andrew Clamp still needs a couple more fights under his belt. Sending him down to ROC. All right, Grant Grant Dawson, two losses, definitely needs some work. All right, next up is Eddie. Not Eddie Alvarez. Ares Mendy, there we go. All right, sending him down to ROC as well. All right, Caitlin Squires. 
sending you to Invicta. All right, it's Tyler. Tyler Diamond not yet here. All right, let's take care of these names. All right, so Gianni. Remember, we we were gonna keep this guy in the UFC, but he has a uh, he's lost two out of three. So now we are gonna have to send him to ROC. Hopefully, get some wins under his belt because he was ranked, and uh, because of that, I was gonna just put him straight up in the UFC. But I can't go straight into the UFC off after a loss. That doesn't make much of any sense. All right. Next up is Elizabeth, not Elias Theodoru, who's been cut in real life. Elizabeth, sending you back down to Invicta. Alright, next up, Mateus. Go to ROC. Alright, has Walter signed back up? Um, hmm. Let's see, news history. Extend steel. I don't think that Walter has signed back up yet, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that one because if he, when he resigns, it's just gonna send him back to the UFC because of a a little glitch. So then we have Caden, who I just uh, offered to, so that is all good. All right, so that is all of the stuff that we needed to take care of, really. And uh, I think we are ready to go. Let's quickly, let's take a look at the recommended hires. A lot of these guys are not really going to want heavyweight division. Not much going on there, really. Mm, light heavyweight. See, there's this guy, Hussein Kushigov. I wouldn't mind having him. He's a champion. Hmm. Let's send him to ROC. Wouldn't mind that. He's on quite a winning streak, actually. So, be a pretty good guy to have. He's in Road FC right now. He's on a five-fight winning streak, or actually a six-fight winning streak, and he's the Road FC light heavyweight champion. Um, hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, bring Hussein in, give him to uh, ROC, see if he can make anything out of his time there. All right, so Hussein will be sent to ROC. Todd Monahan, 39 years old, not really going to have much going on for him for the rest of his career. This guy's on a four-fight winning streak, but it's all just local fighters. Not much to look at, really. And the rest, not much, really. Going down to the middleweight division, Artem Froloff. Remember, we have already signed this guy. Or, I should say, we are in the process of signing this guy. Already in contract negotiations. He's already coming up to the UFC really soon. Diego Lima, 16 and 8 coming off a win 1 and 4 in the UFC from Ryzen hmm he recently fought for title and lost then got a submission win i'm going to pass just cuz i know he was crappy in the real in the UFC in real life i'll pass on him let's see Lewis Long a welterweight division from Cardiff, Wales. What have you been up to? Three straight wins. He's a champion. Yeah, let's get you in. Love to have you in ROC. Lewis Long. Ooh, someone else came in with a better offer. Okay. Let's see. Six fights. How about 4K instead? Alright, cool, cool. Alright, so Lewis Long. Lewis Long, about to be signed up. Let's see here. 18 and 8, Machu's Piss Course. He's on a two fight winning streak, but they're all local fighters. Maxime Chevetz, Walter Waite. ACB, two fight winning streak. Mm, still not much. Brandon Thatch, I think this guy's been in the UFC. He has, as a matter of fact. I wonder why I let him go. I'll just leave him. That's fine. And the rest, not much. Let's see. Ramsey Nijem. Kiro Kata. 
Saul Rogers. Remember this guy is on hiatus. We wanted to have him back, but we really couldn't just because he's not fighting right now. Nagatomo, we were already in negotiations to get bring this guy back. And I don't know why his name isn't on here. So let's go ahead and quickly put it on there. Tosone. Alright. Nagatomo. Uh, James Brum. This guy, 35 years old, though. He's a champion. Two straight wins. He's a little too old to bring into ROC. Um, and I'm not going to bring him into the UFC at this point. What this guy? Teodor Nikolov, 13-2. and two. He's a champion. Two straight wins. I like the record. I'll bring him into ROC. Oh, he just signed a contract. Okay, so he can't come in for a while. What about the... Oh, Tyler Diamond, of course. He's already in ROC. Luca Iovine. He's probably not going to want to sign... E oh, he can. Okay. Let's take a look at, uh, at Luca here. Three straight wins and two different promotions. The Italian. Let's see. All right, cool, cool. So Luca might be coming in now. All righty. Anything else that I see that's pretty good? Not really at the Bantamweight division. Flyweights, Caden Shut. Of course, he's already with us. Akhmetov, let's see. He's coming off a loss, so no thank you. Um, Not much really else. Women's featherweight. I mean, no, they're all going to have losing records at this point because all the featherweights that are kind of worth having, I already have. Although a lot of these fighters have fought for me at some point. Masaki Komogata, featherweight. It says she's a flyweight. Um, Fought in Bellator. She's not just local fighters that she's beaten, so nothing really. Burnsen. No, not nothing good, really. Bantamweights, Chan Finney. No, what about this one? Kerry Hughes, 6-3. and three. Be Some local fighters, 6-3. and three. Nah. 6-3-1, and one. Amanda Lemos. No. Nothing really there. Sarah Alpar. Recently was just given a contract on Tuesday, on uh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Ten and eight. Uh, I have had her in Invicta before, and she went one and three. So I'm not liking the looks of it, and I will not be bringing her back. What about this one? Four and zero. Oh. She's very short for a bantamweight, but four and zero. Oh, I do like the look of. All local fighters, so no. Um, no, nothing really else here. Three and two, five and three, five and seven. Nah, not really anything I'm liking. Eight and seven, ten and twelve, three and six, four and four, eight and seven. Nope. Women's atom weights. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So we are done here looking at those. And I think we are good to go. Nothing really else that I have to look at. Let me just make sure that this is going to be on the UFC network. It indeed is. And we are ready to go with Gaethje versus Ismagalov. So let's go ahead and move ahead forward. All right. Our first prelim is about to be underway. And it's Piotr Jan taking on Amir, the Prince Albazi. Of course, Jan, a really good bantamweight in real life in the UFC. Ranked pretty highly. In this game, he's been pretty well, pretty good as well. Three fights in the UFC, Augusto Mendez, Cody Stammen, and Eddie Wineland. He's won all three. Starting to uh, make his way up. Amir the Prince Albazi, number 20 in the UFC right now. 2-0 here. And he's beaten Aljamain Sterling and Albert Morales. I'm going to take Jan, see what happens. And it's going to be Piotr Jan who wins. And so what was he ranked before? He was ranked number 19. So he might be moving into the top 15. Not 100% sure, but that'd be really good for him. P. 
Piotr Jan gets the win here. Next up is Matt Schnell taking on Cody Stammen. I'm going to take Stammen in this one, as it's actually Matt Schnell who takes it, the underdog winning in the first round via submission. Next is Adlon Batayev taking on Hatsu Hiyoki. Ooh, very even one here. Batayev, the younger one by 11 years, coming off a win. And Hatsu Hiyoki, the veteran, is coming off three straight losses. But it's a really good opponent, so you never know. I might take Hiyoki on this one as Adlan Batayev wins via split decision. So good for Batayev as we move into our next prelim. Marcin Pracnio taking on Fransimar Barroso. And Barroso beats him by submission with a rear naked choke. Very good uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner. Recently lost to OSP. But it was declared a no contest because OSP got popped for steroids. As Barroso has actually retired following this fight. So 42 years of age. He'll finish at 24, 10, and 2. So congratulations to him and all of his team for that. Next is Magomed Yunusilau taking on Shane Burgos. 12, 2, and 1 is Yunusilau. Lost to Magomed Magomed Shiripov, Zabit, last time out. And Shane Burgos, 15 and 5, coming off two straight wins over James Gallagher and Amir Khani. And I'm going to take Burgos in this one, as he actually loses via submission. So Yunusilau back on track, 13, 2, and 1 now. Jason Knight versus Mike Santiago. Jason Knight, the little bit of a favorite here. Coming off a win over Yadong Song. Has won four out of his last five. And Mike Santiago is coming off two straight losses to James Gallagher and Kenny Jordan. But before that was on a three-fight winning streak. We go ahead and go with Jason Knight here as he actually gets it done via submission. All right, Jason Knight the winner there as we are now into the last preliminary fight. And it is Yadong Song, nice name taking on Matt Bassett. Matt Bassett, 10 years his senior, 4-4 four four in the UFC, coming off two straight wins over Godofredo Castro and Chaz Skelly. And Yadong Song, the China, the Chinaman, is coming off a loss to Jason Knight. I'm going to take Song in this one as he loses via split decision to Matt Bassett. So the older gentleman getting the win here. And he wants to fight Cub Swanson next. Very interesting as we move into the main portion of the show. And it's Justin Darth Raider. 16-6. and six, Lost his first fight in the UFC against Shaman Marais. He'll be taking on Mateus Matos. Who's 6-4 and four in the UFC. And is coming off two straight wins over Brian Caraway and Joey Gomez. This was a late addition as Matos was a replacement, actually. But you know what? I might actually take him. You know? I think he might actually win, and he does. TKO in round number one, so Darth Raider will no longer be ranked. Not looking like a very good investment now. So his first two fights in the UFC are both losses. He has to be careful. He does not want to get it sent down to ROC. And Matos calling out John Dodson. Very interesting, that. As we now have a battle of the Brazilians, as it's Gilbert Burns taking on Alan Patrick. Burns, a heavy favorite in this one. The 35-year-old, number 23 lightweight in the UFC. Coming off two straight wins over Roush Manfio and Mike Chiesa. And Alan Patrick coming off three straight losses. I believe this was also a late addition just to, to save the card. As Gilbert Burns dispatches him in round number two. So that is all good. Chris Kamazi now taking on Andrew Sanchez. Chris Kamazi, slight underdog, coming off two straight wins over Matapchich and Ellenberger. Always a very good middleweight division here in the UFC as Andrew Sanchez is coming off two wins of his own against Matapchich and Seedenblad. A very even fight this one. I'm going to take Kamazi as he does win in round number one via knockout. So Kamazi now, that should be three straight wins 
Three straight wins, last losing to Theodoru. Has lost against only quality opponents, so Kamazi doing pretty good, but, you know, not ranked just yet. And he wants to fight Vyacheslav Vasilevsky, so, and I think he's ranked in the low 20s, so that'd be pretty good for him. Next up is Rico Verhoeven taking on Felipe Micheletti. Micheletti is a regen fighter that done that did really well in ROC. Verhoeven, a uh, kickboxer in real life. Two straight wins under his name against Bedorf and Milstead. And Micheletti, the 6'3 Italian or Brazilian, I should say, seven and one, won his UFC debut against Stefan Struve. And I think, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with this one. Two inches taller is Verhoeven. A lot of, of poundage on Micheletti. 23 or 22 pounds heavier. I'm going to take Verhoeven. Um, but Micheletti, always give him a fighting chance as it's actually going to be Verhoeven winning via knockout in round two. So very good for him. Able to get things back on track. He's now won four out of his last five. So very good for Verhoeven. Maybe he gets ranked after this. All right, co-main event time as it's Corey Hendricks taking on Vidal Taylor-Made Galette. And Galette's another regen fighter that did absolutely great in ROC. You can see here he went 5-0 and before being brought up, then defeated CM Punk in his first fight, Khalil Roundtree, and then lost to Eon Kutalaba, who's fighting for the light heavyweight championship soon, and before defeating Ryan Bader. So Galette's number 11 in the world, taking on Corey Hendricks, who is number 12 in the world. Nice top 15 action. Beat Herman in his last fight and lost to Manawa, but has beaten Nunez as well. So very good co-main event. I'm going to take Galette in this one. I think he's just too young and too hungry for Corey Hendricks. But uh, you never know as it's actually going to be uh, Vidal Galette who gets it done knockout in the first round. 9-1, and one, top 10 fighter though. And he says he's one of the most dangerous strikers in the world. Can't really argue with that after knocking out top 12 guy like that. As it's now time for the main event, of course, we all know who Justin Gaethje is. Very dangerous fighter. Uh, losing last time out for the championship to Michael Chandler, who of course got popped for TRT. And then lost or beat Roush Manfio, lost to Kevin Lee, beat Habib, lost to Conor McGregor. Has had a pretty good go in this save. Has just lost to the to the to the wrong people. Demir Smagalov has had a pretty good go of it. Seven and one in the UFC, only losing to Will Brooks, and uh, looking for you know that that one fight that really gets him over the edge. He has a fight actually tonight, I think. So that's going to be interesting to watch on the UFC in China card as we are underway with our main event of this one, Gaethje versus Ismagalov. Getting ready for this main event. It's going to be interesting to see what exactly happens because Gaethje is going to be using that pressure, the wrestling, to set up his boxing. And yeah, those leg kicks. Gaethje just really likes to put on those leg kicks. Another low kick by Gaethje. Gaethje's limping. Uh-oh. It looks like his Maglov might be tagging up Gaethje here. And someone might have a broken hand. Gaethje wobbles. Gaethje can't cover up. Uh-oh, his Maglov is going to do it. End of the first round here. And nothing really comes to to pass. His Maglov 10-8 on that one. Just blowing up Gaethje apparently this is number 2 versus number 11 this would be huge for a Smagalov Gaethje looking to wrestle someone has a broken hand I don't remember or I don't know who it is but it might be Gaethje left hand to the body still into the second round here uh-oh, big strike. Gaethje flush, snaps his head back, knocked down. This Magalov might be winning. Gaethje is covering up, and again, another 10-8. So Gaethje needs to get something going here. Down 20-16, to 16, apparently, right now. This Magalov just all over the number two contender in the world. 
This Magaloff is probably going to look for the finish here. Clinch here with Gaethje. Gaethje pinning him against the cage, but down by two rounds and down by four points total. He's going to need a stoppage, really, Gaethje. They bring it back to the legs. All the damage that he's taken. Oh, no. Leg kick TKO gets it done. Justin Gaethje taking too much damage to the legs, which is very ironic considering he's also known for his deadly leg kicks. But the number 11 ranked Demir Ismagalov just destroying D Justin Gaethje in this main event. Unbelievable. And he wants to fight Sage Northcutt. That would be a huge fight for him. Another top 10 fighter. But Sage Northcutt is way more well known than Justin Gaethje. So Demir going for that for that pride fight. Not pride fight, but more of a fight to make his name more well known. Which is very, very smart on his part. But he just beat the number two guy in the in the division. So he's setting himself up if he can get one more win for a title fight. So that's incredible. So good job by Smagalov. A pretty good card overall. No popularity changes. Everything's at 100% already. Fight of the night is Raider versus Matos. Uh, knockout of the night, Corey Hendricks. Submission of the night, Matt Schnell. And we're going to give a performance bonus to Ismagalov just because I'm nice. So let's take a look here. Top earners, Galette, Raider, Gaethje, Ismagalov, and Matos. One... $1.2 million profit. We know how to, you know, or you already know how it is. I stay making money. I stay staying the most popular promotion in the world. Absolutely dominance. And we're going to take a look because I think there's there was an ROC fight card on the same night. So we'll take a look at that. Take a look at our emails and we will be done with it. But unbelievable, Ms. Magaloff able to get that win. We'll take a look at our big pay-per-view that is coming up, UFC 272. Three title fights, all women's titles, and John Jones also on the card. And when it comes to pay-per-views, I like to go through the entire main card and uh, simulate, like, just let the engine simulate through. The prelims I can skip through, but the main card, I treat it like it's an actual pay-per-view, kind of like a big deal almost but wow now what for Justin Gaethje I mean he's lost two out of his last three he was number two in the world you know it seemed like he might be primed for a title shot if he had won this fight but now now we're receiving a little more murky remember that lightweight division with Steve and Ray and Habib fighting for the title pretty soon and now it's Magaloff might have his name posted up in there if you can get a win over Sage Northcutt, that'd be pretty huge for him. That'll definitely be something that I look to set up soon. All these companies going for more hires. As we are back into it, let's take a look at the major stories. Eddie Alvarez is out of a fight. I'll have to take a look at that. Frankie Edgar is back. There's a new Invicta card that's been announced. Remember, France Barbarossa retired. <laughs> Logan Paul gets his ass beat in the first round. That's great to see. Nothing as far as, like... Negotiation sixteen and two Islam Mamedov and a two fight winning streak thirty two years old welterweight mm, not right now not right now seventeen and eight nah you know what yeah I'll take a look at at Mamedov we'll go ahead and sign him up bring him into ROC for four fights. Alrighty, Islam. Alright, he still has a fight that's scheduled though, so we'll have to wait and see on that. 
Taking a look here. And Francoeur needs to have his contract renewed. Five and five. Coming off a loss. See you later. All right, LaSalle not. Three and four. Coming off a loss. See you later as well. Okay. Alden Mesa. Seven and four. Coming off a win. And two out of his last three, some local fighters in there. We'll give him a couple more fights in ROC. Alright, so Alden. Tim Smalls needs to have his contract renewed. Seven, two, and one. This guy's an atom weight slash straw weight. So we can only really keep him in ROC. So go ahead and do that. Tim Smalls. His last fight was actually a draw. That's crazy. Rob Fonts, who of course is a pretty good fighter in the real life, but hasn't been able to do much of anything. Has lost his last two ROC fights, so I'm just going to cut him. So goodbye to Rob Fonts. Kenneth Berg. 8-0. And coming off of a win, two wins in ROC, 8-0 though, still not enough, even in the light heavyweight division. Give you four more fights in ROC, see if you can do something special, Kenneth. Alright, Mohamed Usman, brother of, uh, <laughs> brother of Kamaru Usman, yeah. 4-1, and one. still needs some seasoning, 33 years old. He's a heavyweight. That's crazy. All right, so Muhammad will be going back down. Eddie Alvarez fights canceled with Jim Miller. Campman versus Magny. Let's go ahead and take care of that now. So Eddie Alvarez is done. Okay, Campman versus Magny. Was that on a prelims? It was. Wow. Okay, so we need to get something going here for the prelims. Something just that can happen quick. Islam Makachev versus Jim Miller. That sounds about right. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. So that's taken care of. Blas Laliberte needs to be re-signed. Seven and two. Two straight wins. Go ahead and get him back in there. All right, Bloss. Here we go, Verhoven. Do I need to resign him? Probably. He's going to be a big star eventually, so sign him up. All right, Switson. People have extended their deal. Matt Bassett coming off a win needs to be re-signed. Uh, two fights is good enough for him. All right, retirement. Yep. Amir Albazi coming off a loss needs to be renewed. That's fine. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Matt Schnell coming off a win. Beat Cody Stammen. Give him another two fights at a very cheap price. 1000 That's crazy. All right. Let's take a look at this guy because they sent him down to ROC. He has won the title, lost the title, and then beat Logan Paul. So beating Logan Paul isn't necessarily... A good indication of how good you are. So I'm still going to need to see a little bit more out of uh, Mariush. Alrighty. Marcin Procnio, who I think is coming off a loss. Lost to Barroso. Um, nothing really exciting coming out of him. 
He's only beaten pretty bad guys. I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything good happening from. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him two more fights. Two more fights, and if he doesn't do good, then I'm cutting him for sure. But two more fights can't hurt. Shane Burgos coming off of uh, that loss to Yunus Liao. Mm, he's still doing okay. Give him a couple more fights. That's all good. Hatsu Hiyoki, 38 years old. Four losses in a row. I can't even send him down to ROC if I really wanted to. So we'll take a uh, we'll take Hatsu Hiyoki off the roster. Edward Vartanian lost to Carrington Banks his last time out. Oh, we'll give him a we'll give him another one. He's on hiatus, and he's not even willing to negotiate. So he's going to end up getting his contract canceled, or or it's going to end up expiring. Really, Berengar Paz needs to be renewed. Seven and two. Has lost two out of his last three, so we'll keep him in ROC. All right, so Baron Gar. There you go. Alan Patrick. Not sure if I'm re-signing him. 18 and six. Has lost his last four. He's 38. So let's go ahead and cut. All right, should we cut Mr. Patrick? Hmm. You know what? Yeah. If you can't cut it in the UFC, you're 38 years old already. There's no real point. Yadong Song and Demir Ismagalov are injured. All right. So that looks like it is just about done. Let's take a look at UFC 272. Made a went for the Women's Featherweight Championship is Yanan Wu taking on Revelina Nana Berto. Yanan Wu is both the UFC bantamweights champion and I think she's the no she is the bantamweight champion and Amanda Nunes is the featherweight champion but she is injured or something right now so she can't really defend the title so now we have Berto and Wu going at it for the interim featherweight title also we have Janessa Morandon defending her strawweight title against Livia Renata Sosa Ugh, excuse me, bless you. All right. So Miranda defending her title against Sosa, 19 and 1, taking on 16 and 3. That looks to be a pretty good one. Of course, beating Gadella her last time out for the title. Sosa is coming off of a win over Chenjecek, Casey Kowalchevich, and Nunez, and recently lost to Gadella for the championship earlier on. But other than that, and then the, that little loss to Xiaonan Yan, she's been doing great. So her second time fighting for the title in this save. Also, Montana De La Rosa defending the Flyweight Championship. Last defending it against Ariane Lipsky. As she defends it against Miskela Batautis. Only 3-0 in the UFC, but getting a, a chance at the title. Also, we have John Jones taking on Eric Yaboy Anders. Jones looking to uh, get another win after losing to Ion Kutalaba, his first loss since that Mark Hamill disqualification. Eric Yaboy Anders, 35 years of age, coming off a four-fight winning streak, last beating Mauricio Shogun Hua, so no slouch really is Eric Anders, but kind of more of a tune-up fight for John Jones really. And then finally, the last one on the main card, Marif Parayev, number 20 in the company, taking on Mark Jakeshi in the lightweight division. Jakeshi was super close to getting a championship opportunity. Had he beaten Kevin Lee, he would have fought for the title, and then he lost to Stephen Ray as well. And then Parayev, number 20 in the UFC, off a loss to Sage Northcutt. All right, so that is UFC 272. You can take a look at the prelims there. A lot of ranked fighters on the prelims. Carl, look at this. This one I like. Brian Ortega taking on Temeroff, 11 versus 13 on the prelims. And then 10 versus 15 in the heavyweight division. Cisse taking on Krylov. 
So a lot of good things to look out for here as we come back with UFC 272 in our next episode. Thank you for watching. I have been AZPlow21, and I'll see you guys next time.